Tell me, if Putin dies tomorrow, would it change a thing? Oh, I hope so. But, uh, well, I hope so that he will die tomorrow and I hope so that it will <laughs> change something. Uh, but it will depend on um, who will become the successor of it, who will be the next president. Because, you know, my own, um, my personal opinion that, unfortunately, it doesn't matter what person will become a, a, a president of uh, Russian Federation, they, he will be forced to be like a policeman for, for, for the whole country and to build police state because of so many nations, so many religions in this country. Be, uh, without the so-called strong uh, power, strong arm, I think uh, Russia will collapse because it's uh, artificial um, structure. structure. Yeah. So, or you will be a Democrat on the presidential position and you will lose Chechnya, Tatarstan, other one, other countries, and it's good for us, actually. Yes, that's what uh, that was reading my mind. Yeah, or you should be uh, the next dictator and build a police state. Unfortunately, Russia doesn't have another another way of of democracy. So uh, I hope that uh, and for us and for Europe, I think. Um, the collapse of Russia Federation will um, lead for a sustainable peace in, in Euro-Atlantic sphere. Let's hope for that. Do you expect for Kyiv to finally get an invitation in Washington next year? I mean, to, to, to NATO. Do you think this is going to happen? Um, I hope so, because we are talking about the political invitation. Right, sure. Yeah, no, no. Uh, we understand that before the victory of Ukraine, it's this, yeah, yeah. this, this process of, uh, of the accession will not start. But politically, just giving the sign to, to Ukraine that you will become a member state. Um, finally. I th finally, yes. Uh, I think uh, it's... Um, it will be a, a good option for us. Uh, okay. I hope so that uh, we will get some some strong words in the final communique. At of, least of, said of, loud and clear, finally, yep. because uh, it, it is not the first time that Ukraine attempts coming very close to a doorstep of NATO and just left left behind it. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm re I, I really mm. want to hear those words just as well, loud and clear, just to hear them. Let's open these doors finally. Finally, <laughs> yeah. Until someone enters on a Russian tank. Yeah. All right. So, um, but NATO is expanding right now. Yeah. New members. What do you? How do you think Kremlin is reacting on that? Well, we see this reaction. Uh, uh, there's no reaction. Exactly. This was. Um, there, there <laughs> this was is the, no the, reaction. The, the, the this is ridiculous because yeah. I mean, this is. Um, you know, it shows real um, reasons of this war for, for the whole True. world. It True. wasn't uh, the, the reason that you, we started this war because Ukraine was so close to, to the membership in, in NATO, in, in NATO right. so we just prevent this with this process. They don't care about it. Uh, they, uh, their border with NATO enlarged uh, in 1,000 1, 200 kilometers with, with um, uh, Finland. So what was the strategy? Yeah, no what strategy. What was the strategy? Yeah. So really? And they don't care about it. And you know, but I think that, of course, the war in Ukraine um, allows or help Finland and Sweden become a member state. Without this war, I think the reaction of Russia will be much more um, aggressive. aggressive, yeah, even before this decision. They, I think that they uh, would try to stop this accession and to stop Absolutely. this. Absolutely, I have no this, doubt in that. 